Welcome to Crutchfield Live, everybody. We are back. It is uh, Thursday. It is 4 p.m. We're doing this every two weeks. Thank you for joining us. I'm JR, training manager here at Crutchfield, and uh, we're live on YouTube. We're live on Facebook, and we've got a bunch of fun stuff to talk about today. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I already see that we're getting some comments coming in uh, right off the top, so so happy to have some people watching already. Uh, living loud with Andy said, what's going on? Andy, we are going live today, so thanks for joining us. Uh, Ruben said, what's up? Uh, Eduardo says, hi, on Facebook. So thanks already to those of you that are watching, and keep the comments coming. Uh, we've got a question from Ed Juarez about shallow mount speakers. I'll get to that here in a little bit. Uh, we would love to be able to interact with anybody that's watching today. Uh, we'd love to answer your questions. Uh, shout outs are great. If you have observations on the stuff we're talking about today, we'd love to interact with you. So uh, what are we talking about today? Uh, we've got three bigger, big topics we're going to be going through. The first, uh, we're actually going to talk about wire. Uh, Crutchfield speaker wire, power wire, uh, there's other brands of wire. There's been some questions coming in from customers about this. Uh, we're going to talk about wire and answer some of your questions. Uh, and uh, we're going to do that with uh, one of our guys from merchandising who buys some of our wire. His name is Peter. Uh, he's been on our Crutchfield Live before and uh, he's a lot of fun to talk to, so he'll be with us first. Uh, JR Schwartz says, hey, hey, JR, right on. Uh, next, after Peter, uh, we're going to bring in one of our sales advisor team leaders who's going to talk about uh, a shopping tool that we have here at Crutchfield called Connect ID uh, that makes uh, talking with one of our advisors while you're on our website a whole lot of fun and very interactive. Uh, so we're going to do that. We're going to show you how that works and what it can do for you when you're talking with one of our advisors. Uh, another shout out. Uh, let's see. 
Uh, Slady31, hiya, I made my first Crutchfield purchase yesterday. Only a wiring harness, but it's a start, LOL. You're right, that is a start. We've got plenty of wiring harnesses, so uh, awesome. Glad to have you in the fold, Slady. If you have any, you have any questions about other stuff you might be interested in, hit us up. Uh, Andy says, uh, new to the stream, but not the brand. Love how you guys are going live. You can never have enough information about car audio. We thought the same thing, and that's why we're here. Rick on Facebook, hey, my favorite, Crutchfield. Awesome, glad to have you, Rick. Uh, and the last topic we're going to talk about today, we're going to get into a little bit of uh, some stuff about high-res music streaming. Uh, you probably know that there's plenty of streaming services available out there. Some of them stream in high resolution, uh, meaning better quality sounding music, and there's several options for that. And there's, uh, there's actually some hardware things to consider when you are streaming music and you're looking to stream it in the best quality possible uh, in high res. It's a lot, there's a lot of great high res music out there. You might need something like uh, one of these D to A or digital to analog converters. And we're gonna talk about specifically uh, some issues we have found with streaming some high res music and how to make sure you're getting the most out of your music. Uh, we do have a, oh, and we're gonna bring in Zach B. He's one of our, uh, our podcast, or, um, video producers. Uh, he's been, uh, he does this stuff at home. Uh, and so he's kind of passionate about it. And uh, we're going to talk to him about that. Uh, before we get uh, into all of those topics, we do have a poll question today. Uh, so uh, look for this poll question. Is it on both YouTube and Facebook or just YouTube? Yes. It's just on YouTube. I'm sorry, Facebook. I don't know why we can't make it work there, but it's just a thing. Uh, but what is your preferred streaming music service? That's the, the poll question. You got four choices for answers. Uh, Spotify, Apple, Amazon, or another high-res music service like Cobuzz or Tidal. Uh, and I realize there's other music streaming services out there, but those are the big ones and the high res ones. And so we gave you those four to choose from. Would love to know what, uh, what, is, being what is being used most. What is your preferred streaming uh, service? And uh, I know I keep saying Spotify. We're not here to talk about uh, any of the funky issues going on with Spotify and Joe Rogan and Neil Young. That's not what we are all about here at Crutchfield. We're more here to, here to talk about sound quality and high res and that, that kind of stuff. If you, if you want to know what I personally think about Joe Rogan and Neil Young and Spotify, I have a personal podcast. It's called Three Things with JR. It's available anywhere you get podcasts. I'll be glad to tell you. I already, there's already an episode out where I talk about that for ad nauseum. So if you're interested in that, go there. Uh, we're not going to go there any more than that right here on Crutchfield Live. So I think we're ready to talk about wire. Uh, while we're bringing in our guest, I'll read some more comments. Uh, Peter Logan, you want to come on in and uh, ready to talk about some wire? Let's see. Sir, how are you? Excellent. How are you? Fantastic. Thanks for having me back again. Welcome back. Yeah, it's good to be here. You know, I feel like I'm coming like on a, like a late night TV show. So if I could get like a theme song or something when I oh, come in. We should in. get a theme yeah, song just, for sure. The Crutchfield Live has a theme song, but we haven't yet done that thing that they do on like. Fallon and Kimmel and all that, where the song has been like carefully curated by the band leader yeah. to have some sort of relevance. And a curtain, a curtain that right? I... Right? What would be your walk-on music? I'm gonna have to give that some thought. Yeah, okay. I well. figured you can come up with something. Before you get out of here, That's the, if you wanna leave this studio today, you need to tell us what would be your walk-on music. Um, uh, and you know what? Before we get into this wire, I'm seeing this comment, and I know you've got thoughts on it. We're going to get more into streaming and stuff with Zach in a little bit later. Mm -hmm. uh, but MJ Bird said, Apple Music is lossless. And I feel like I heard you say that like 10 minutes ago. Yeah, I'm, I'm a, if, in my poll, Apple Music is, the, is my preferred streaming service on my phone, on my Apple TV, connected to my home theater system. Yeah. Uh, they've been doing it for quite some time now. Um, and uh, it's, it, you know, I, I, it's part of my regular family plan that I already have, so it's not like a, a third service that I have to go and, and pay separately. It's already, already integrated into the stuff that I use all the time. I love the high-res streaming. I also love the, uh, the spatial audio aspect uh, and the Dolby Atmos of, of that mm -hmm. as well, especially with some headphones. That, that feature is amazing, both with movies and with music. So they have a, a full catalog, like a lot of the streaming services do, that are not only high-res, but also putting on that additional layer of spatial audio slash Dolby Atmos. It yeah. gives a big depth and spaciousness to regular two-channel music. 
So you're you're I know you're an Apple guy, right? Apple I'm Watch, a, phone. You're an of, Apple yeah. guy, so you were predestined to be an Apple Music listener. But you're finding it's got a lot of stuff that you might not find elsewhere. Yeah, and I previously subscribed to a lot of services. I was a, a title member for for the longest time, but again, once once they integrated it with a service that I already use and is integrated in my daily you know stream, that's that's just what I use. So. Sweet. Um, Rick says Apple Music. They've done well to upgrade this year. Uh, Bluetooth signal going in makes for a weak signal output from the Pioneer. So that's just additional information. But he's into uh, into the Apple Music thing as well. So we've got some Apple fans out there like yourself. All right, but that's not why you're here. You're here to talk about the most exciting products Crutchfield sells. By, by far. I, I mean, absolutely. Uh, we sell drones and TVs <laughs> and cameras and like massage balls. I mean, we got a bunch of cool stuff, but nothing parallels like wire. Yeah. Because actually, most of that stuff doesn't work without a wire of some kind. Somewhere down the line. So yeah. wires are pretty important. Yeah, they, they are. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because we have talked about this a little bit because, because of what we do, right? We, we encourage our, our, you know, our customers to, to learn more about the products and then, you know, to, to do it themselves, right? It's a, it's, it saves them money. It's a cool project. It's fun. But if you went to a shop and had a lot of this installation work done on your car, or your boat, or your motorcycle, or whatever, you would never see what's back kind of behind the curtain, right? You pay the money, you get the job done, you never see what's behind there. But because of what we do in encouraging our folks to do it themselves, mm -hmm. they get to see kind of the nitty gritty of stuff. And they get to see things that they might not normally see in an installation. And some of it can cause some confusion. And we've I've had a couple of questions on this. I know some of our advisors have well, and it really, uh, it, comes down to why is my copper wire look silver? Yeah, and, and if we look at if we look at product pages on the website for amp wiring kits and speaker wire and stuff, it's going to say it's oxygen free copper, and you're going to look at the wire. And if you're looking at your wire and you even know what that means, <laughs> right? It might not look like copper, and and, and and it doesn't. And that's a comment we like we get a lot is that. Hey, I bought this wire. I thought it was it was supposed to be, you know, shiny like a penny, but it's it's shiny like a dime. So, you know, what what's going on? So, kind of wanted to talk a little bit about that. You know, we know that copper is the the best conductor of electricity, right? So, yeah. it, it's you know, it's a very conductive, but it also uh, has some some issues when it comes to oxidation and corrosion. Uh, you know, one of the biggest examples that everyone's seen, of course, is the Statue of Liberty. It's a, it's supposed to be kind of copper, you know, gold, but yeah. after the years, it oxidizes, it turns green, and when that happens into wire, uh, it reduces the longevity of the wire. It also starts to reduce the electrical conductivity of the wire as well. So rust and oxidation uh, is a is a bad thing when it comes to wires. So in, in your house might not be uh, such a big deal, but when we're talking about mobile environments, we're talking about your car, uh, your ATV, your motorcycle, your boat, uh, you're exposed to a lot of humidity, you're also exposed to a lot of high temperatures. So that combination of oxygen, high temperature, moisture, and copper can lead to some bad results. Yep. So what a lot of manufacturers do now, including ourselves in the wire that we make for our Crutchfield wire, is to apply what's called tinning. T-I-N, it's, it's basically tin on top of, of the copper. And what that does is uh, it extends the, the usable life of, of the copper by like 10 times. I mean, it will last so much longer, it will last so much longer, but it will also maintain its conductivity for much longer because it's not getting that oxidation that we'll see with just regular exposure. So it's like a protective layer of a conductive metal that's on top of the copper to make the copper last longer. Right, exactly. And it also makes it look like not copper. And, and, and that's the thing is, if you can see, I don't know if you can see on here, we've, we've got some, some wire. This is all, uh, you know, oxygen-free copper wire, but it all looks silver. And so, like, and again, that causes some, some, some questions for our customers. Why does my copper wire look silver? <coughs> and you can see it from, uh, you know, from marine speci uh, specific wire like this Kicker Systems, but also from JL, from, from again, from Kicker, from T-Spec, uh, and including our own cables that, again, it's tinned for protection and, and yep. longevity of, of performance. Can you remove the layer of tin? Yes, uh, and my first thought was I was gonna bring some wire and a small knife and, and kind of trim it down, but some of the, the, the video guys thought that might be a bad idea in case there was blood on the camera and stuff. It just, that, they frowned upon that. We know how good you are with knives. <laughs> yes, um, but <laughs> what I did is I actually got a strand uh, of our own, this is our, our Crutchfield wire, this is a four gauge power wire, uh, and you can see, if I can hold this up, that uh, you know the un the when you take the jacket back, it looks like uh, it looks like shiny silver, and so what I did is I took some sandpaper 
and kind of peeled back or, or kind of rubbed off the metal end, and you can see that, uh, can I get that, can you see that a little yeah, bit better? Yeah, like that. That, uh, that it is actually copper. Now there's over 1,800 strands of wire in this particular cable, so I had to do each one by hand. Each and, one, no. individually. Um, but so you can still see a little bit. started this three weeks ago. <laughs> You can still see a little bit of the silver within there because, again, there's a lot of strands of wire in there. So I, I mainly got to the outside of it, but I took some sandpaper and just kind of, you know, peeled it off so you can see that actually on, on one side, same cable, uh, it, it looks, can we see that? Yeah, it looks, uh, oh, wait, how can you do it? That's the silver side over here. Uh, and then there's the, you know, with, with the tinning taken off on the other side. So, yeah. and, and again, we, we get those questions enough that we thought we wanted to talk about it and kind of explain First of all, what is it? Uh, you know, why is it there? And, and what's the benefit, you know, to, to our co consumers? And it really is, it will make your, your wire last longer uh, and then maintain its, its conductivity. Another minor benefit that uh, is, because it's already tinned, this tin is the same stuff that solder's made out of. So if you ever okay. do need to attach a couple of wires, this is almost kind of pre-partial. You'll still need some your solder on your own, but this is all this is already sort of kind of pre-soldered. So if you're putting together speaker wire or even power wire, um, that extra tinning is again the same stuff as solder, and will kind of once you apply the the proper temperature, will help for for better better know. bonding, better a better mechanical yeah. connection. Right, right. Nice and kind of as you said there at the outset, this is not like a huge problem we're trying to fix. This is something that some customers have noticed, right? So uh, when when Crutchfield customers buy like an amplifier where they're gonna need new speaker wire, new power wire, mm -hmm. uh, you're gonna get that in your box. And if you're taking it to an installer, uh, you're never gonna see the wire. Right. You may not have even thought about it. If you're doing it yourself, uh, then you're gonna open up your amp wiring kit and that's when you're gonna see the wire. And even then, I don't think most people know or care, right? Uh, but if those that do know and they saw it said copper on our website and it doesn't look like copper, this is what's going on. This is why that is a thing. Uh, and uh, so on, on product pages where we know the products have tinned wire, right. right? we're updating like the bullet points to make sure it's very clear that that's tinned wire. You know, we, we mentioned it, I think, on all the, all the product yeah. pages, but yeah, I think yeah. it's just something that you read over, and if you don't know what it is that we're referring to, it's just another kind of word that you go, oh, I, I get oxygen-free copper. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we can, we can talk about that. That's a, that's, that's a whole other thing about You're going to open that can of worms? Well, I mean, it's not a huge can of worms, but, you know, there are those that will, you know, mathematically, mathematic, math, using math, <laughs> they will say that, you know, if you took a, a right off, you know, the, the first produced, that regular copper and oxygen-free copper have the exact same, or pretty much the exact same conductivity. There's real no difference in that. So why do we, uh, why do we sort of kind of espouse and, and recommend oxygen-free copper? Well, it, can, it goes back to that longevity thing. So when it's fresh made, regular copper and oxygen-free copper, again, about the same amount of you know, uh, conductivity, but again, exposed to the things that we do in our vehicles, cars, boats, motorcycles, side-by-sides, you know, RVs, where any, anytime you have that, again, that combination of heat, uh, and that heat can be from external heat. It can also be from your power wire. Uh, you felt your amplifier, you know, and if you actually feel some of your power cables, they do get warm to the touch. So they're also heating up as, as well. Yeah. So when you get oxygen, you get heat, you get humidity, you get copper. Again, that combination is bad. So that's, again, that's the magic equation for by tinning, makes it last longer. Uh, it, it maintains its, its sort of, uh, you know, flexibility. Uh, when it starts to oxidize, it gets kind of brittle and, and starts to break off. And again, it lets your, whatever you're transmitting through this cable, whether it be power uh, or whether it be your music, it allows it to be a safe and consistent installation that will last long. Yep. yep. Uh, it seems to me like this would be helpful having tinned wire, for example, when you're connecting your amp power wire to your battery, right? There's great ways to do it. There's also, I've seen many, I may have done some installs that didn't look as top notch as they should have, you know, years ago. The yeah. old me did that. <laughs> uh, where I had, you know, wire that was stripped and then I had it maybe sandwiched into like a battery terminator that I bought at Advance Auto or something. Mm -hmm. And uh, I caused myself problems because that wire was starting to corrode and turn green and the conductivity was bad. I mean, I was, it was definitely having issues and uh, tinned wire would have less, maybe no issues like that, right? That's, yeah, and, that... and we're referring to this wire that, that we are peeling back, but you can buy a lot of wire that is already sort of pre-tinned. When you pull back, it's already a solid, just a solid chunk of tin on yep. there. So we've seen that in some of the power wires as well. 
again, that's, that's another school of thought that, uh, you know, do, do all your wires need to be tinned? Uh, there is a school that says that it's more important on your ground wire than your power wire because you've got that short wire with, that's taking all of that excess energy from your amplifier and returning it back to the metal chassis of your vehicle so you know, it can return to the battery. Mm -hmm. And that actually, it's, uh, it's, a, it's almost more important to have a tinned ground wire uh, than it is a, a power wire. But again, for most applications, particularly again in those high humidity environments like marine and your car, uh, tinned wire is definitely the way to go. Uh, we do offer some cable that's not, and, it's, and again, it's perfectly fine, but given the choice between the two, that's what it is, and, and that's the choice that, you know, do you want to have tinned or you not want to have tinned? Again, in your house, in a controlled environment, probably not as big a deal, but again. And we're even writing up an article currently on this, right? So that uh, if, if somebody were talking to one of our advisors or tech support, uh, we can show them an article that it sort of explains all of this. So that's coming soon, I yeah, think, right? Yeah. So en enough people have asked that question, Why again, why does my copper wire look silver? That we want to be able to provide a concise and consistent answer, even provide some, some technical information uh, behind, again, what it is and, and, and why it's done and, and why it's beneficial, you know, for you. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Uh, you must have done a fantastic job explaining all that because nobody has any questions. Or either I totally confuse them and then no one understands. So it's either either way. It's, or, or it's wire. Uh, <laughs> and maybe that's why. <laughs> it could be. The, it could, could be. be that too. It yeah. could be. Uh, so maybe you're sitting there going, can you please get to the Spotify stuff? <laughs> uh, we'll get there. Uh, we're going to talk next to Cam, uh, one of our team leaders. But Peter, uh, thank you for being yeah, here. Man. For Thanks for talking having me with again. Me. Uh, I'll work on that theme music, and then yeah, next time oh, wait, yeah, you have right. me on what that. Yeah, that's right. What is what's your theme song? I just I have to because it's copy. Has it be copyrighted? Does we can say the names of songs. I, I, we just can't play them. I, Okay. Oh, there's, oh, oh Scherzer the, the training dog. Okay. dog. He Mom sets a dog, trap. Right? He's sitting right here, and if you stepped off this way, he would take your leg off. So. By the next time you have me on, I'll have that theme song. Th that's you. your ticket back into the room. Uh, <laughs> that's it. Is, <laughs> we need a theme song. Understood. All right. Every good hero needs a theme song. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thanks, Peter Logan. Uh, and let's see. So uh, Rick said, good job. Nice job, Peter. Good job, Peter. Cam, come on in. We have a uh, sales team leader named Cam, uh, and he brought his computer with him, and he is going to uh, demonstrate some fun stuff with us. First off, how you doing, man? Doing great. Thanks they, for having me. They let you away from the call center for like an hour to go hang with us? Sometimes you get a lucky break. Right. So. <laughs> Very good. Uh, we're going to talk about something that uh, our advisors use with most of our customers, right? And it's called Connect ID. Can you kind of sum up what Connect ID is for everybody. Yeah, so Connect ID is an awesome tool. It uh, basically allows us to make our virtual store more personable. So, you know, you're at home, a lot of us are at home. You know, when you call in, um, you can see our, basically our virtual uh, business card pop up. You'll see my picture, my phone number, all my info, and I can actually, you know, basically walk with you through the aisles of Crutchfield. So I can send you links to different products. I can push you a card, send you images. So it's a great tool. It's very helpful for us. I think we should show people how it works. Yeah, let's do it. Um, uh, before we do that, uh, actually one of our commenters from earlier, Slady31 says, I used Connect ID yesterday. It was great. Uh, so she just bought, uh, or I'm assuming she, he, she, Slady31 bought a uh, wiring harness yesterday. Um, and also, Eric asks, is it the black wire or the red wire I hook up to the doffer to make it sound better? <laughs> I'm not sure if that question's a joke or a typo or what. I don't know what a doffer is. So we're going to need more clarification on that, Eric, but I uh, love the question. All right. Uh, when you call Crutchfield, uh, normally the number that shows up here at the very top of our website, uh, and we're going to pull up my computer here momentarily so you can see... Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be our pretend customer for today. Normally when you call Crutchfield, there's a phone number right up there at the top. Uh, when you get to crutchfield.com, you actually are going to have a different phone number than everybody else who's on our website at that moment. Uh, we have like somewhere in the neighborhood of 15,000 toll-free numbers, and they're recirculated for every new website, so every new web visitor. That's how we know your web session compared to anybody else's. And we take that number and we put it together with something called a Connect ID number. If you click on contact us, you're gonna see this unique number. 
and your advisor has this number when you call them. If they don't have it for whatever reason, they might ask you for it. So I'm gonna give you my Connect ID number that's on my screen right now, and you're gonna to start to use it as if you're the advisor and I'm the customer. Yeah, and I think we should, uh, there is another way we can find Connect ID oh, as that's well. that's right. So sometimes customers you know, may have trouble locating that small contact us at the top of the page, so a so, neat trick. Um, if you click on the shift and enter key on your keyboard simultaneously, it'll pull up the Connect ID as well. So, yeah. So that right works on any computer, right? That, that's not going to do that on your iPad or your phone. Connect ID does work on iPads and phones, but uh, that shift enter thing, holding down shift, hit enter. If you can't find your Connect ID number and your advisor is asking you for it, this is where it is. Uh, and that's a pretty cool way to pull it up. Um, did you see my number? You need me to read it to you still. I think I've got it. You got it already. Yeah. You're paying attention. Sweet. So uh, that would happen at the beginning of a call. You would find out. So this way, it allows us to be connected. I'm the customer. You're the advisor. And we're now connected sort of behind the scenes on our website. Absolutely. What yeah. would you do with our connection? What's the first thing you would do? So the first thing that I would do when I get that Connect ID number, I put it into my apps on my end. And uh, I'll validate it. And oftentimes, my picture will pop up right on JR's page. So it may take a second. Um, and if you don't see it right away, one cool thing you can do as well is uh, you can click on the Crutchfield logo in the top left corner of the page and you'll see me pop up as well. And sometimes it happens right away. Also, we're both inside of Crutchfield right now. So every now and then it acts weird because we're it both does. inside of Crutchfield. Doesn't act so weird when it's a customer and an advisor. Um, but your picture will pop up momentarily here. So, so that's what's happening on the customer's end, right? Which is yep. kind of cool. I mean, how many, yeah. think about how many places do you call and shop with where, for one, you can call them and talk to a human, and two, they make it easy to figure out who is that human, show you a picture of them, give you their direct phone number. All of that pops up uh, when, when we get connected like that. Uh, and we'll see that pop up here shortly, right? Yep. So absolutely. that's what's going on on the customer's end. What are you seeing on your end? So on my side, oftentimes I can see, you know, recently viewed items or, you know, if you're shopping for something for your car, I can see if you entered your vehicle into our system on the website. Um, that's pretty helpful for us. So sometimes, you know, advisors will make mention of, hey, were you checking out this TV or this radio or, you know, do you have this car in it or on our website? And, you know, sometimes they'll be a little surprised, like, oh, how'd you know that? And every once in a while, I'll get someone that's a little creeped out, you know, think it's kind of some big brother stuff, but it's definitely not that. Um, it's so not yeah. that. I mean, you literally just <laughs> yeah. heard about how it works. It's all those phone numbers. And of course, it's just our website. Your advisor has no ability to do anything more than customize crutchfield.com for each individual shopper they're talking to. That's it. That's all they can do. Uh, we can't see any deeper into your computer. We can't control anything. We can't uh, do any of that stuff. So sometimes people worry that that's the, something what we're doing, but we're not. Uh, so you can see what vehicle I've entered. Um, let's say I'm a customer and I just wanted to buy like a car stereo. Uh, you're going to ask me some questions, right? Figure yeah. out what stereo is right for me. We got like hundreds of them. Uh, what uh, you're going to want to know if I want Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Uh, what are some other questions you might ask? You know, uh, you need Bluetooth, the CD player. Um, are you hooking up amplifiers to this? You know, are you powering speakers? You know, just kind of run of the mill um, as far as just your day to day habits while you're driving in your car. So, you know, if you're someone that likes a lot of streaming capabilities and a lot of control over your phone while you're driving, something with CarPlay or Android Auto may be the way to go. Um, or if you're a little more, you know, simple and you just need Bluetooth, AM, FM radio, we have plenty of options for that as well. Cool. Hey, real quick, D Doug says, what's up? Uh, what's going on, Doug? <laughs> right? Uh, Eric followed up with, he was being a little funny, got to have a laugh every now and then. Uh, continue. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Uh, I was uh, hoping that I hadn't missed something, uh, and now I know that a doffer isn't a thing. So, there you go. Uh, so, you are going to ask me all those questions, figure out what you want to recommend to me. Yep. And in the old days, right, I've been here for 25 years, what we used to do once we figured out what we were going to recommend is I would tell the customer, hey, turn to page 126 in the catalog. It's the third radio down on the right. And uh, today's version of that is what you're about to see. So let's say you've picked out a radio, right? And you're thinking, all right, based on all of that information this customer just gave me, uh, this is the radio I want to recommend, and I want to show it to them, uh, and I want to do that in kind of a cool way. Uh, do you got one there? You think you're ready? I think I've got one. That looks like a good one. It's an awesome one. 
So you found a radio, you're gonna recommend it, and I'm sitting here, I'm the customer on my end, that's what you're seeing on your screen now, is uh, I'm just looking at crutchfield.com, waiting for something interesting to happen, and uh, Cam is making something interesting happen now. Now, that little pop-up box thing, it did not pop up yet. So yeah. this is when you would tell me what. Like, what happens when that cool box that hasn't come out yet doesn't come out, what do we do? Yeah, because you know technology always works when we want it to. So <laughs> oftentimes you can go to the top of the Crutchfield page in the left corner where it says Crutchfield in big bold letters. Click on that. Normally, if I would click that, it would just take me to like the home page of Crutchfield. So that's what yep. I'm gonna click on right now. Let's see what it does now. It took me to the home page of Crutchfield. Uh, this is weirdness because we're working internally here. I think that's what's going on. Um, or we, or you didn't get the right Connect ID number. Let's yeah, just double let's check you got my ID number ID. right. So let's see. It's 258-964-4621. There we go. Did you have it wrong? I think I uh, had one digit off. I'm so happy you said that because that's a way better explanation than, oh, it just doesn't work right now. <laughs> um, there we go. Cool. So he's got the right number that time. He's entered it in. He's connected with me. And uh, go ahead and push me that radio you were gonna send me before. And maybe, ah, we are connected. There. there we go. Your advisor, Cam, would like to send you to a new page. And I have a button that says, go to new page. I've also got Cam's direct number and a bio about Cam. I can go read about Cam if I wanted to. But for now, I'm gonna click this button, right? You would tell your customer, click on that button. Absolutely, it'll take you right to what we talked about. Oh, this looks like a neat radio, Cam. Why did you recommend this one? And we could talk about why you recommend this one. And it just popped up. Without me, the customer, I don't have to go search for it or find it or figure it out or drop down the menus and go dig for it. You just took me right to the page. Yeah, so pretty much just as if we were in a real store, you're walking with me down the aisle and I'm taking you right to the product. Um, so this fits all your needs, and I think we come to the conclusion this is the best fit, so we'll send it right to you. And I, I love that analogy about taking me through the aisles of the store to the product itself. Um, yeah. This is about as close to you as you can get to Absolutely. that on the, on the <laughs> web. Um, what else might you do? Like, well, you've got this there now. What else could we do? Yeah, so say if, uh, if you have a certain vehicle, and on our site we try to be as specific as possible with you know narrowing down the correct version of your submodel. So you have the premium or the base model of a truck or a car, you know, we want to be very particular with that because there's different gear that's always required. So um, if you can't figure out which model of the radio you have, I can often, you know, take a snapshot from our research file and send you a picture. So in this case, you know, if we're trying to figure out which version of this truck JR has and he can't figure out if he has a four inch screen or an eight inch screen, then I can send him a snapshot of both, which is pretty cool. These research files in our computer system are fantastic. Our vehicle research team goes into most vehicles that are out there today and we, uh, we take it apart. Uh, we, take a, we take vehicles apart, we take pictures of what's in the dash behind the radio, what's in the doors, where the speakers are, the rear doors, the rear dash, all of it. We, 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 we take somewhere in the neighborhood of 700, 800 photos a lot. of each car <laughs> with our research files now. And every one of those photos, your advisor can see it while they're talking to you. And sometimes people say, can you send me that research file? And the answer is no, we're not gonna send you 800 pictures in all of our vehicle research. It's kind of, it's kind of what makes Crutchfield special. If you want that, we've got it and we can help you use, you can use that to help you. We can also send you just like one or two pictures from it though, right? Yep. Uh, our tech support team might use this to help a customer. Uh, when, when they're actually doing their install, we can send them pictures like this, but you might be able to use it like you said to help determine which vehicle you have, which version of your car, or maybe what it looks like inside your dash once you've pulled the radio out, or what your speaker locations look like in your door, that kind of thing. Uh, so you've got a picture ready to go? I've got a picture ready to go. And you're gonna send it to me? Yeah, and so when I snap a shot from my end, this is how it'll look when it comes to JR. And just let me know when you get that. The box just popped out, now I've got a picture of you there and your beautiful smiling face. Thank you. <laughs> and the go to new page button is there again. And so you're telling me I'm gonna, I should click on this? Yes, sir. And the picture didn't come in. Maybe you need to copy it again real quick. Yeah, let's check it out here. Scroll down a little bit, make sure, yeah, that's, that should work. All right. All right, pushing the image again. 
just to make sure. And that little advisor box is popping out and I can click on go to new page and it's not working. So the, now we know that it's acting weird because we're internal and yeah. it's actually saving it to a server somewhere and this computer's gotta go find it and when it's internal, things act weird. So um, let's see, so image, Image push is what we call that. We can use that to send you those types of images or like a snapshot from an owner's manual. Uh, so things that might help you know what your car is, what it's gonna be like to install things into your car. And it can be very visually helpful for all of that. Yeah, absolutely. What kind of reactions do you get from customers uh, when you start using Connect ID with them? Well, probably our favorite one is, you know, people are saying this makes everything so much easier. So, you know, they don't have to go searching for things, especially when it comes to articles or, you know, just finding radios that are going to be the right fit for them as far as all the features and everything that we discuss. Um, so it just simplifies the process overall. Um, but, you know, the shocking, the shock value is oftentimes high to, especially when we first get that Connect ID number and we can see, you know, items they've been looking at previously or see if they already have their car entered on the website. So a lot of times people are pretty happy about that. Cool. I've got some questions coming in. I just had to, uh, just so everybody in the background knows, I just had to close the YouTube poll. So we should probably see results from that coming in soon. But, uh, cause it was blocking some of these comments. So I apologize if some of these were sitting here for a minute. Jorge says, hi, do you send abroad like Amazon does? Uh, and I bet you know the answer to that. Do we ship anywhere in the world, Cam? Not anywhere in the world, but primarily the US, some US territories. And we do have a Canadian website as well. So we do uh, do some business in Canada. Yep, so yep. if it's got a US zip code or a Canadian postal code, uh, you, we might be able to ship you something. Uh, anywhere else, probably not. Uh, we don't know when we'll be expanding out into the entire world. Uh, I don't know if Bill is ready to conquer the whole world yet, but someday. Uh, Mustang Garage says, but when you say some speakers don't fit a car, when they do fit, that's neat, right? So we've got all of these measurements on all these cars, right? And our vehicle research team takes the door apart or the dash speaker location apart, and we measure that thing every way you can measure it. And when we measure our speakers, and we do our own measurements of all of the speakers, and then we determine, does it fit or not? Uh, and it's not uncommon for a customer to think, well, this speaker seems like it should fit this car, and you say it doesn't. Uh, do you ever have that happen on the phones? Oh, absolutely, uh, pretty often, but you know, our research team, they measure down to the nearest thousandth of an inch, so we try to be as precise as possible. So sometimes there may be a little wiggle room, but we may advise, you know, maybe take precaution if you're going to do that, or it may require some customization. Um, but we just try to find what's going to be the best fit, just knowing off of our measurements, you know, without any issue, this is going to drop right in, essentially. And, you know, if uh, someone posting uh, a question under Mustang Garage tells me they probably have worked on a car or two, right? Sounds like they may be a little handy. Yeah. <laughs> so your idea of what fits and a novice installer, who's ne somebody who's never installed speakers before, their idea of what fits might be very different. Right, uh, you might be able to overcome issues with uh, uh, speakers that are too deep or stick out too much, uh, and you might be able to make things fit that we've measured and we determined if you don't modify something, it's not gonna fit. Uh, and we're conservative and we are admittedly conservative because the last thing we wanna do is say it is gonna fit and you buy it and you get it home and you get your car taken apart and then your speaker doesn't fit, right? That's a worse problem to have than, uh, than our website saying, some don't fit even when you might be able to squeeze them in there. So we are a little conservative on that. That's why that's happening. Uh, you, if you call and talk to an advisor, they can tell you very specifically which measurement is out of whack. What, what makes one speaker not yep. fit or another speaker? And do, do you and your advisors, do we ever sell speakers in situations like that where our system says they don't fit but a customer wants them anyway? Can we sell that? As long as we, warn them ahead of time, hey, this may be more of a custom installation and we can carry some gear that may help with that. Um, but if you're comfortable doing the modifications and you can pretty much buy whatever you want. Yeah, when we've, yeah. As, long as, we, as long as you know what you're getting into, you can still buy it. Uh, the website's just gonna say it doesn't fit and it will still let you buy it as well, but you should probably talk to an advisor. You'll get more information about why it doesn't fit. Uh, Living Loud with Andy says, when you're an installer, Crutchfield is the place to go when looking for vehicle specific scenarios. Perfect. So you have a plan before you break something right on. 
Living Loud with Andy, great. Uh, Mr. Randy One, will the Sony flagship A90 83-inch OLD replacement have an 83-inch also? Uh, meaning the new Sony, uh, I assume he means OLED, O-L-E-D. Uh, will there be an 83-inch in the new Sony TVs? Uh, so I think the answer is yes. I think they're getting bigger this year. Um, but I do not have, uh, unless you're pulling it up, I know, I know you're looking to see. Just checking to see. There, is new, there are new TVs coming. We talked about them a few weeks ago uh, when we were talking about all the TV news that was coming out of the Consumer Electronics Show. Uh, and I think some of that is still to be determined as far as getting models in and which ones will actually be available this year. Uh, so I don't have any insider info I can share with you right now. Are you seeing a current model? Uh, A90 83-inch OLED? There is a current model, but uh, no future model So that's yet. the 2021 model? It is. So we the don't A90J. have no 2022 in our system yet. Uh, so keep an eye out. Uh, when, when it becomes a real product that we can actually take orders for, you'll see it on crutchfield.com. Uh, so thank you for that. Let's see. Rick says, would be cool if the vehicle info included alternator sizes. Boy, don't I know it. You ever run into that? Uh, all, where you ever end up talking with customers about alternator sizes? I mean, that's a little deep and more technical than most people know about or care about on their car. But every now and then it comes up, right? Yeah, occasionally. I wouldn't, wouldn't say it's too common, but if we're working with a big system with you know multiple amplifiers or very high power, then it, it may get mentioned. Um, I'd say batteries probably get talked about a little more than alternators, if anything. Yeah, because your battery and your alternator work together to provide all the electricity for anything electrical in your car, which means your car stereo, your windshield wipers, your headlights, and everything else that needs power. And some cars got tiny little wimpy alternators and little batteries, and other cars, like big pickup trucks, got huge batteries and all the excess power you could need. And that does play into it sometimes if you're trying to install like a big subwoofer amplifier and things like that. So we, we do pay attention to that, but this is that's not a specification of vehicles that we have in our research uh we do uh we do generally know what the deal is but uh yeah i agree uh, i will pass that feedback along to the vehicle research team uh i'm sure it's something they have thought about but couldn't hurt to make sure they know that you're looking for it as well uh mr randy one also wants to know the new tech qled have you had any customers asking you about uh the new tvs that are coming out that have been talked about already at CES. Have you heard about these at all? I have. It sounds pretty cool with uh, what Samsung's doing. So I'm looking forward to actually being able to see it in person. Um, been reading up a lot about it, but I have a few Samsung TVs myself of their older QLED models. So yeah. I'm a big fan. I mean, what, the, what seems to be hot this year is combining some of the OLED technology with some of the LCD technology, yep. right? So the, the, the pros and cons are sort of going away and they're both pretty darn awesome now. Yeah. Uh, they both look good in bright rooms. They both can uh, have self-illuminating pixels and better vibrant colors and all of that. So uh, it's not clear now which one is the best, <laughs> OLEDs, QLEDs, uh, and, and all the other ones. So uh, let's see, Sam Ambrosini, ported versus a sealed subwoofer box. I'm shopping for a new sub for my SUV. Ported versus sealed, that's a question older than time, right? Yep. You've answered that before, you wanna take it? Yeah, so it kind of comes down to, you know, preference or what types of music you listen to for the most part. You know, if you're someone that listens to, you know, different genres like, you know, hip hop, EDM, a um, little R&B, you may be better served with the Porter Box. But, you know, if you like classic rock or heavy metal, you know, you may like that punchier, more accurate type bass in a, in a sealed box. So it kind of just depends on, on your habits of what you listen to. Ported or sealed? I do believe, yeah, there's an article about that. Uh, we could we could literally spend hours talking about yep. <laughs> subwoofer boxes and subs and how many and what type of base you're going to get. We do have an article called How to Choose a Subwoofer Box. Uh, and there is definitely information here about, look at that, the first question in the article, sealed versus ported, what's the difference? Uh, but yeah, it comes down to efficiency and boominess. Uh, Ported, a little bit more bass, right? But maybe not the most accurate. A sealed box, a little tighter, a little bit more accurate. And it kind of depends on the music you're listening to and how loud you want it and how much power you've got. There's a lot to consider there. Um, so uh, I would suggest if you are shopping for a sub box, you can probably do it yourself on the website. You should call one of our advisors. They can connect ID you uh, and uh, figure out what box really does make the most sense for you and your music and your car. 
Maybe you'll talk to Cam. Maybe you'll talk to one of the advisors that uh, he supervises. Uh, people are coming in with the opinions on boxes right now. <laughs> there we go. Mobile dog, ported Sam. SUVs act like a secondary enclosure at times. So yeah, a, a vehicle that's kind of cavernous like that, something to think about when picking out that box. Do you want tight, accurate? Do you want it to sound big and huge? Uh, let's see, Mustang Garage, ported all the way. Alarmed placebo, hi guys. Uh, Sam says, thanks, I'll check it out. So thanks for, uh, that article's a great one. Definitely check it out. Mobile Dog gave us a, a slow golf clap, so that's awesome. Mark on Facebook says, when mounting a cartridge in a, oh, we're going a total different direction now. You ready to talk turntables? <laughs> <laughs> when mounting a cartridge in a tone arm head shell, should I use those tiny nylon washers? Well, have we ever done that? Have you ever replaced a head, cart a head shell on a, uh, to a turntable? I think when I first started here and I was training with you, uh, it's been a while. Yeah. Well, even still, even when in training, we, we weren't taking tone arms apart. I see the person who has the answer and some at least some thoughts on this. Uh, Philip, you want to come and share your thoughts with us? I was just going to say yes, but go watch our uh, YouTube video that I did. Oh, that's great. There's uh, So Philip, he's, he doesn't want to come. He's shy. He's, he doesn't like being on camera. Um, but he, uh, we have some videos on turntables that go into setup and all of that. And uh, you can find them on our YouTube channel. Uh, somebody is going to find that and post a link to that uh, in, the, uh, in the chat. So uh, that's coming at you soon and uh, a little bit more information there. But neither Cam nor I have taken apart turntables. We, I have one. Do you have a turntable? I have two. You have two turntables. Yeah. <laughs> microphone? You got a microphone? No microphone. Do, no? Okay, so just to see what I was doing there. Okay. Uh, so yeah, we have turntables. We play vinyl, but I'm, I'm not the guy who takes them apart and does all that. We've got people here that do. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Somebody here says, I'm a bass head, so I just want bass. I get that. There's a lot of you out there, and it's awesome. And uh, we've got bass, so if you need some, give us a call. Uh, Mobile Dog. Boomy Bass Kicks ass uh let's see yes sir uh mustang garage i love my two 12 inch kicker l7s in the kicker box that's the way to do l7s is get the box that kicker makes specifically for them it's a pretty great solution and uh those big subs move a lot of air flawless whoo man you got you were here for more than just showing us how connect id works uh we got a lot going on here do you have any Thoughts before uh, the before we I kick you out and bring Zach in. <laughs> uh, never. I mean, if you ever have any, you know, if you second guess yourself while you're shopping or ever need help, just give us a call. We'll be glad to help. And you know, Connect ID is a great tool that we can use to make it a little easier for you. Uh, and Cam is one of our uh, he was he was one of our best advisors, and now he's one of our best team leaders. Uh, he helps advisors uh, learn how to be better at helping you figure out what you need in your car, in your home. Uh, and uh, he's, a, he's a really good dude. So you can uh, go find him on the list of advisor bios or pick the advisor you want. There's, they're all there with their direct numbers. It's kind of crazy that we do that. But there it is. Thank you, Cam, for being here, man. It's a great time, JR. Have Appreciate a great it. evening, buddy. Thanks for having me. Scherzer here. Oh, good call. Nope, Scherzer has found another spot to lay. So he is out of your way, so you're good. Scherzer is my dog, by the way. Sometimes he sits right here on the floor, but he is not there today. Uh, we've got special guest number three coming into the studio. How you doing, Zach? Great, man. I'm happy to be up here with you. Ha happy to have you up here with us. Normally, this time of year, we're finally recovered from going to a consumer electronics show in Vegas, right? That takes like yeah. a month to recover from, but... If you uh, do it right, yeah. Yeah, right? Also, normally this time of year, you and me are starting to think about a softball seasons uh, starting up again. That's um, right. But we're not here to talk about any of that. We're here to talk about this and high res music and streaming and stuff like that. Um, yeah. So uh, you kind of had an idea and a thought and an observation, right? That's what kind of started all this. Can you tell us what was that? What, what's going on? Yeah. So what happened was uh, the pandemic kind of sent us all home for a little while and I kind of receded into my headphones big time and I started listening to I have Spotify and Cobuzz and I started listening to the high-res stuff and really digging it and, and getting into how well you can make that sound. And um, I have a, a, an outboard digital to analog converter, a DAC, connected to my computer is how I listen mostly. So what that does is it takes the 
music streaming from the computer and puts it into that DAC, which is, just has one job, and that's to convert those digital music into something you can hear in your headphones. So my DAC will also display the streaming, um, the um, sample rate. So they have different sample rates um, that just denote how much information is in these files. And if you're into high res, this is something you're thinking about, right? Bit yeah. rate and sample rate. Uh, the more bits, the more actual data there is in the file, and the, the higher the sample rate, the faster it's analyzing those bits, uh, the more often it's doing that per second. And the more often it does that, the more accurate it can convert it to analog, right? So those bit rates and sample rates, that's kind of what that's all about. This is not a master class on bit rates and sample rates today. Uh, neither one of us are equipped to actually do that. <laughs> Um, but, it, but you kind of understand what they mean, and you want bigger numbers, and you're streaming from high-res services, right? Like Tidal yeah. or Cobuzz or whatever, and... Just want it to sound as good as it possibly can. So uh, streaming something from Cobuzz through that DAC and into my headphone amp and into my ears, just, it's about as clean and perfect as it can be. But I noticed something odd the other day. Uh, I was listening to Cobuzz, but my Cobuzz app was acting up and I couldn't use it momentarily. So I, I was over on their web player. So I have all my same songs are up there, all the music I've saved, all my playlists, everything. And um, when I start playing one of my favorite songs, uh, there's an album by Muddy Waters called Folk Singer. And it's a really quiet recording and you can hear like, things creak in that room if you're listening to that high res file. And I just always thought that was kind of cool. And I turn that thing on and my DAC is just stuck on 48 kilohertz sample rate. And I'm playing through the web player and I just think at first that's kind of odd, but um, I started Googling around about it and, and maybe a lot of people know this, but I didn't, is that Windows, Android, everything is trying to resample that music. It resamples all sound going in to I guess it's, a computer's got to do a lot of things other than play music, right? It's got to play notification sounds, all kinds of sounds, and it just, just to make that easier on itself, it just turns it into one static sample rate. So what it's doing is it's altering that high-res file that I wanted to listen to. It's doing something to it. Um, maybe the difference in that you can, you can hear or can't hear real easily, but it's... What I want is I want that high-res file straight into my DAC without anything stepping on it in between. Yeah. So um, so playing Cobuzz in a browser window, Chrome, Edge, whatever browser you're using, you weren't getting the high-res that Cobuzz could send you. That's true. And you knew this how? I knew this because on the front of my DAC or a DAC like this DAC Magic 200M here, there is there are little lights that come up. Uh, that will denote which sample rate you're getting. So it really should match exactly what you're playing here, here. And that's what I was noticing, is that the wrong light was lighting up. And in my case, only one light was staying lit, and I thought, oh, maybe something's broken in the DAC or something. Yeah, we're getting a good close-up of it now. We do not yeah. have this DAC plugged into right power there. or computer or anything. It's just here to show you that you can see those numbers. Yeah, these, these numbers here are the sample rate. And if you're getting the cleanest, most pristine audio possible from Cobuzz or Turtle <coughs> or wherever you get it, then that should match up with the sample rate on there. Um, <clears throat> so we got to get around this now, right? There's Yeah, I mean, you're paying for Cobuzz. Yeah, I'm paying for those bits. I want them all untouched going into my equipment. Yep. I just want to hear it as perfectly as possible. So. Windows is different from Android, is different from OS X. Um, so there isn't one simple answer to get around this. But uh, Windows, uh, the best way I think to deal with that is some kind of front end thing like Rune or Ardervana or some kind of software program whose job it is to collate all these streaming services and your local files and bypass that audio mixer that's built into your computer. So that, uh, a service like that, uh, and I know we, a lot of our products say they're room ready, uh, and that's not just a technical behind the scenes thing, that's like a cool, like it adds to the music listening experience. It's kind of modern digital album art yeah. and liner notes. Really and, cool. And it also helps to make sure you're getting the resolution. 
It does. It, it's it's part of its job now is to is to bypass that and give your DAC a clean signal, uh, un uh, unmessed with from your internal mixer. Um, Android, uh, there's a very popular program called USB Audio Pro. It does something like that if you're on an Android device. Um, High Five Vega on YouTube says, Mo Bits, Mo Better. Mo Bits, Mo Better. Couldn't say it any better myself. That's I mean, that's, sure. that kind of sums up this entire discussion. We could have just said that. Yeah, it's really all about <laughs> just getting the... Yeah, exactly. Right. You know, we should hire him as a writer here. Um, yeah, it's all about just getting what... Getting what you, you know, I used to think that just sticking that USB DAC into the side of my computer just automatically took care of everything. And as it turns out, not really the case. No, so. it's not always that simple. And so, uh, if I remember correctly, you told me that using the Cobuzz dedicated app, you were able to get back to those higher bit rates and stream and uh, and sampling rates. Indeed, the problem in my case was the web browser, the web player. So that's good, I guess, in a pinch. But if you're really uh, sitting down to try and hear Willie Dixon's shoes in that room or something, um, it's um, better to go with the standalone app. So Title now does this too. They they kind of quietly rolled out an update where they bypass those internal mixers and go straight into your DAC. But it takes that, that little bit of extra step sometimes. So this, what we're not providing today is an exhaustive list of exactly how to get the best resolution from every single streaming service on the planet. But in general, it sounds like it's a good idea to use the streaming services app that you can download and install onto your computer because uh, you'll probably have more control. It'll probably allow those higher bit rates to go out and process, get processed by your DAC or whatever you're using to convert it. Uh, and that's probably a more reliably better, higher resolution solution than using uh, like a web player. Yeah, the web player's problem is that in Chrome uh, or I was using Chrome, I think, when I discovered this is just that there really isn't a way around it sometimes at all. So um, that was news to me also. I had a, a new Chromebook tablet thing and it has a nice screen and I thought it would be a good controller for listening to music at home. But uh, I uh, spent a long time uh, looking into forums and reading around about this stuff and I just couldn't figure out a way at all to do it on that device in particular. So it's, it's uh, uh, I'm only up here to raise some awareness of this because you might have to go and find uh, a solution that works for you and your particular version of this. But keep an eye on those lights on your digital analog converter because that's what they're telling you. They're telling you what you're getting. And if you're not getting it, you might have to change some settings, get a program, something. And not every deck has those lights, like an audio, a USB, like an AudioQuest Dragonfly. Dragon? You're not going to have lights, things like that. But is there a way to tell if your, US, if your DAC doesn't have a handy row of lights like this one does? Could be. Actually, the Dragonflies do do this. Uh, they, they don't have as many numbers on here as, as uh, they do, but they have light that glow. The little Dragonfly actually glows different colors. Oh, really? And uh, that was something I used actually to test my, uh, my problem I was having, and that thing was just stuck on whatever color. What do we have here? Uh, you ask and you get. Like, you just start talking and people just start <laughs> bringing you cool stuff. That's just what life is like here at Crutchfield. <laughs> this is uh, an AudioQuest Dragonfly Blue uh, with uh, either, is that just an adapter cable? But yeah, but that's a, uh, that little Dragonfly there lights up different colors. Yeah, uh, even on my Dragonfly Black from a few years back, uh, does the same thing. And this is uh, the whole idea here, by the way, uh, is that you take this and plug this directly into the USB connection on your computer. Uh, if your computer doesn't have that style of USB, you might need an adapter like this for USB-C, that kind of thing. Uh, but once you plug this in, what should happen is it should take over the job of connecting uh, to all of the audio that you're playing on your computer and then converting that audio from digital to analog. This also acts as a headphone amp. So on the other end of this, you're gonna plug it directly into a set of headphones and uh, I challenge you to try to do an A-B comparison of what your headphones sounded like plugged into your computer's just straight up normal headphone jack and then plug them in here. Uh, the difference is like night and day difference. Like it's no joke. It's not subtle. It's a really big difference. Yeah, I mean, a lot of this stuff, you, you can get into discussions as to how much of this can we actually hear as human beings and everything. But this, for sure, 
Uh, it's one of the first steps, I think, to becoming some sort of an audiophile type person. <laughs> so we've got a Listening whole bunch of activity video. going on in the YouTube chat, and a lot of people have been talking about ported and sealed subs and stuff. It seems like they've got their own thing going on there. Uh, but there's a couple interesting comments. Uh, first off, Brian Hildebrand says, old Ryo Hill vet here. I wouldn't mind a little softball talk. Those were the days. So uh, do you know that name? Did he play with us? Uh, I don't remember. Brian Hildebrand, I think you uh, used to work at our Crutchfield store in Charlottesville when it used to be located in the Ryo Hill Shopping Center. For anybody looking at the meeting chat, that's what all that means. Uh, let's see, live in loud with Andy. I feel you if you want lossless music, I feel if you want lossless music, original CD files or FLAC files are the way to go. If you're going to use Bluetooth rather than a physical connection, you're already losing out on quality. Couldn't agree with him more. Yeah, that's well put, very well put. Um, yeah, what I'm talking about I think is what we call bit perfect streaming, right? Because you can stream all this stuff uh, and get it playing on a speaker, no problem. Sure. Using Bluetooth or something, but he's right that Bluetooth is a compressive format that, that does do a little bit of crunching there, so. Yeah, if you're into high fidelity, Bluetooth just is not the way to go. Uh, so wireless uh, and whole home music systems like Sonos are getting, uh, they've been around a long time, and for a long time they, they weren't really high res. Uh, but they now support some high res music streaming from services like Cobuzz uh, and others, right? Is this is a thing we've been researching here a little bit lately? Yeah, so Jeff Miller, uh, who's our headphone guy and a uh, really smart, knowledgeable guy, has been uh, telling me a few things uh, before I came up here to, with you today. And one of them was that Sonos does, uh, with Cobuzz for the time being, but I wouldn't be surprised if it if all the services eventually work this way. but I think, uh, was, it, was it Amazon HD? Was that another one that was coming soon to Sonos, according to Jeff? Yeah, there was something about it was supporting Atmos, and I think maybe the next, I don't know how the, that stuff works really. But, um, but yeah, they're starting to support that. And they're on Wi-Fi, so they've got, they don't have this Bluetooth communication kind of built-in compression problem that they would. Yep. Now look, Bluetooth is great too, because I use Bluetooth a lot for all kinds of things, but if I'm really, really want to get into it, that's when I'm, that's when I'm hunkering down with all the gear, you know, something like this. I mean, Bluetooth headphones. is great when you got like a portable boombox speaker out at the beach or something, right? We don't, oh, yeah. I mean, high res is not the point of being at the beach, um, but if you are in a listening room and if you're doing some critical listening and if you're doing it with Bluetooth, you're doing it wrong. For sure. Yeah, and if you got yourself a nice pair of headphones, a nice set of speakers from Crutchfield or something, then you deserve nothing less, I say. Uh, let's see. The, the Nolan17 says, love how informed you guys are. Appreciate you. I appreciate you, Zach. I appreciate you, I appreciate you so much. I appreciate you, Nolan. I appreciate 17. you so much. I want to show you a blast from the past. Uh oh. <laughs> I want to show our audience a blast from the past as well. <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, you and I were both involved in videos here at Crutchfield uh, before it was cool. Yeah, like, it's cool now. It's funny because it really was uh, kind of something we had to kind of volunteer for and make time for it. For yeah. my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look! It's on the screen for everybody to see. Should we oh, should we listen great. for a bit? This I, I picked a clip where you were once again talking about digital music. This was how to get your iPod to play <laughs> in your car. We might not be able to hear it. I think they can hear it. it has you covered? Yes. Just plug your yeah, iPod directly into yes. the USB. Yes. Uh, I'm going to mute that hold, so they holding, don't... Holding the iPod. Holding the iPod. Look at uh, me. Absolutely. I just, uh, I found this video the other day <laughs> when I knew you were going to be on the show. I was like, uh, and I told everybody, if they want to play a video of uh, JR from back in the day, there's some very embarrassing videos there too. But they didn't do it for some reason. So <laughs> they just said, no, let's just do Zach for today. <laughs> uh, That's funny. Yeah, we've been at it for a while now. Whoops. But, uh, there we go. Uh, I do want to say, well, if you want to pull my computer back up, there are. So, sorry to do that to you. No, no, nope. it was, it That's, was main, it was fun for me, uh, for sure. Seeing the look on your face. Yeah, just uh, remember when you put videos on the internet, they stay there. They kind of stay there for a long time. <laughs> uh, so, 
Uh, there are some really wonderful articles already on Crutchfield.com yeah. about high-res music. If you do want to dive deep into bit rates and sample rates, uh, things like that, if you want to see more about Cobuzz, I think we've got an article coming soon about Apple Music Streaming Service. We're try to, trying to hit all the big ones here to make sure that you can be an informed consumer, uh, informed music streamer. Uh, and so there's lots of choices out there. There's even an article on how to get high-res music in your car. So if you want the best possible digital music, there's lots of things to think about, clearly, and you dove deep on this one. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, there, there, it's such a nebulous world, I guess, but in the end, the highest possible quality files just sound great. They sound great through the kind of gear we sell. Yeah. It's, life is short, things should sound great, I think. Uh, Rick on Facebook said, great segment so far. So kudos to you, Zach. Thanks, Rick. Uh, thank you for watching, Rick. Uh, a, whole, a whole lot of chatting going on with some people that used to work and still work at Crutchfield. Uh, Andy, sup, Andy, Brian. Brian, hello, Brian, uh, Brian Hildebrand. Uh, Robert uh, Juarez says, Bluetooth is more about convenience for me, pretty much. Uh, yeah. That makes, that makes a lot of place, sense. It has its place, I think, and I like it too. Um, we, got a, we did a poll earlier. I don't think I gave the results of the poll yet. Uh, did you see this poll? Do you know no, the results? Don't know the results. What do you think? One, what is the preferred music streaming service? Spotify, Apple, Cobus, Tidal, Other, or Amazon? What do you think wins that? I'm going to guess Apple. So we had 27 votes. That's a pretty good number of votes. Spotify wins. Oh, 40, Spotify, of course. 48% yeah. are Spotify. 29% uh, said Apple, 14% said Cobuzz, Tidal, or Other, and 7% said Amazon. So uh, I, that tells me, uh, I, I wasn't surprised that Spotify mm. was number one. It's, it was one of the first, and it's sort of the, the big gorilla in the room, right, for as far as uh, um, streaming services go. Yeah. But Cobuzz and Tidal, uh, they cost a little bit more, it's a high-res thing, and uh, not as many people even know they exist. And to see that that is at 14%, that number is going up. Uh, and I think there's a lot more attention being given right now to streaming services because of the stuff in the news, right? So True. people are looking for alternatives. And if you happen to be looking for a Spotify alternative, Cobuzz and Tidal might be a great alternative because it will also sound better. Yeah, I use Spotify and Cobuzz and like them both a lot for kind of different reasons. Um, but yeah, they're, um, yeah, Spotify doesn't surprise me, but I, I am happy to see that many people going for those high res. And, and we keep hearing Spotify may offer this in the future. Uh, you know, if you can, if they can get it up to CD quality, it's a pretty big deal. Uh, Osvaldo says, greetings from Puerto Rico. Ah, greetings. Excellent. Thank you for watching, Osvaldo. Uh, I, I, I know I couldn't get quite to everybody's comment in there. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on in the, in the chat. Uh, it's been fun to watch. Uh, big shout out to everybody. Kenneth says, good information. So sounds like we've done our job today. Uh, and so thank you to all of the special guests that joined me here in studio today. Peter Logan uh, with, uh, with uh, just a riveting discussion about tinned wire. Um, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I did not know that either. I did learned you learn something? Today. There yeah. you go. Uh, and uh, Cam, one of our sales team leaders, mm -hmm. talking about how it works when you call Crutchfield and are chatting or talking with a phone advisor. Uh, they can actually kind of browse the website with you and share pages with you. It makes that experience extremely helpful and interactive and visually interesting. Uh, it's pretty awesome. Uh, Rob, uh, Robert Juarez says, I miss the old catalogs. I read them over a hundred times when I was younger. We get that a lot. A lot of people uh, reminisce about the catalogs. We do still put them out. Not as many of them get mailed out at a time. A lot of people are just look at our emails and things like that. But uh, if you want a catalog, Robert, uh, give us a call and, uh, and or shoot us an email. Go to the website. We can get a catalog sent out to you. And uh, they're very informative, lots of great information. Uh, it's less about a list of products and more about a lot of shopping help, uh, kind of like these articles and such that are on our website. Um, oh, I like what Solid Snake says. As a kid, I went from comic books to Crutchfield catalogs. Taught me a lot. So very nice. cool. <laughs> uh, I learned stuff. Thanks, guys, from Alarmed Placebo. Thank you to everybody that's been watching today for all the comments. You've, you make this more fun for me, for us, uh, and we're going to keep doing this. We'll be back in two weeks. Uh, we are still figuring out what we're going to talk about. Uh, if you have thoughts and stuff like that, feel free to keep commenting uh, here on this video. We do pay attention to that stuff, and uh, we will factor that in. Uh, but we are—we know we've got some things we're cooking up for the next uh, for the next Crutchfield Live. So that's in two weeks. We do this every other Thursday at 4 p.m. 
Eastern Time. Uh, I'm JR, training manager here at Crutchfield. On behalf of Zach and Peter and Cam and all of the crew behind the scenes, thanks for making all this happen. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in two weeks. Sweet. Well done. Yeah.